From VTV Channel 6 Studios in downtown Vernal, this is Local Point with your host, Chris Piner. Welcome to Local Point, brought to you by Strata Networks. I'm your host, Chris Piner. On today's show, we welcome to the studio Ryan Berkeley and John Erickson from the Ashley National Forest. And it's good to have both of you on here today. Thank, Thank you. you. We've had many, uh, many other people here before, but uh, I understand this is uh, your first time on Local Point for that's both of you. Yes, that's right. So are you both new to the area? I should ask you uh, individually, John, maybe you give you a little introduction about yourself. I'm John Erickson, and I'm the Forest Supervisor in the Ashley National Forest, and I've been here a little over two years, and I moved from the Boise National Forest prior to that. Relatively new here, but mm -hmm. two years, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Ryan? I'm Ryan Berkeley, and um, the Wilderness and Trails Coordinator of the Duchesne Ranger District. I've been here about three years now, and prior to this I was in Denali National Park, Alaska, and the Frank Church Wilderness on the Payette National Forest in Idaho. Oh, I, I always love to ask that, that question because every time uh, I get to hear of these, these great uh, locations and fun places that you've been, and then you end up right here in our neck of the woods, right? Mm, yes. <laughs> well, today uh, I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the events that you have going on. There's always fall activities and, and things that are drawing people out into the forest, or, or might, or should. Uh, John, can you tell me a little bit about some of that? Um, yeah, well, today we're going to talk, we'd like to talk about the 50th, celebra 50th anniversary of the Wilderness Act and the celebration that plans we have, and uh, Ryan will talk about that. And then we'd like to talk about just conditions on the forest and with all the rain that we've had, but also all the opportunities we have. So um, maybe right now I'd turn over to Ryan. And ask. Okay, let's do that. Well, in 1964, the Wilderness Act was signed by President Lyndon Johnson, um, and it preserved and protected areas of certain areas of federal land in a natural condition. Um, basically, the wilderness is an area that has, pr has opportunities for solitude and primitive and unconfined recreational opportunities. Um, it's primarily affected by natural conditions and natural processes, and where man is a visitor that does not, does not remain. Right, and it's been 50 years. It has been since 50 years. that. So, and what is that? Uh, 60. Is 1964. That 64. Yeah. And in 1984, the High Uintas Wilderness here in our backyard was established by an act of Congress by the Utah Wilderness Act, and it established a 456,000-acre wilderness um, just right in the High Uintas High High Uintas Mountains. Right. One of the things about the act, I would encourage uh, your viewers to maybe go online and look up the act because. It starts out really clearly focused on future generations and the effect of being able to find areas of solitude. And, and I know that sometimes wilderness can be controversial, but they were clearly looking at future generations and an increasing population and a, and a finite amount of uh, resource to enjoy. And so they might have, might have even been looking at us. 50 years down the line, we want there to be... Absolutely. They were looking at us. They were looking at our, the next generation beyond and us. And beyond us. And uh, clearly looking at the future of where we might be when we have far more people and, and far fewer areas of uh, solitude. Right. So. Will there be something uh, here locally commemorating this 50th anniversary? Yeah, I think so. And Ryan, I think you have some plans to look at wilderness activities and, and, and uh, some things we've been doing already this summer. Well. I mean, primarily for the wilderness anniversary, we want to encourage people to get out there and enjoy the wilderness, enjoy what's, what's there. Um, we'll be doing some slideshows at Moon Lake Campground with different, um, showing different areas of the wilderness. Uh, the, maybe we're going to try to do a, a program at the library with a slideshow as well with some showing, uh, per, well, King's Peak, the highest point in Utah is within the high, high, the high Uintas wilderness. And it's an easy three three day backpacking trip from the north side, or a four day backpacking trip from the south side here. Do you know how much it might have changed since the uh, this wilderness act was was signed? Are you aware of that? Are you, when you mention a slideshow, I'm thinking of, you know, what did it look like 50 years ago as compared to now? Do you think uh, there's a difference? I think there's not much difference at all. There was in 1933, I believe, por a portion of the wilderness was designated as the High Uintas Primitive Area which limited development within that area. And there's been changes throughout time with different dam construction within the wilderness and some cattle grazing, but other than that, it has not changed. And at really, all. that was kind of the aim, wasn't it? That you preserve it, that it stays this way, and, and future 
uh, generations can enjoy it. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, you mentioned that uh, there are things that we want to do to draw people into the, the forest to enjoy what is there. And uh, I want to talk a little bit more about some of those kind of things as well. We've got just a little bit here and we'll, we'll talk in the, after the commercial some more. But John, what, uh, what is going on that, that might draw people that way? Well, um, this, on September 20th, we're celebrating the rededication of the Ute Tower. And that's a really a big thing. That Ute Tower is um, the only remaining uh, look fire lookout operating. And it's really taken a, a lot of effort. Uh, several years ago, they did an assessment of it. And given uh, the years, it's experienced deterioration and whatnot. So we basically work with the uh, historic corps and uh, with the local communities to uh, be able to afford uh, rebuilding it and rebuilding it in a way that it's safe, rebuilding it the way that it'll last another 70 some odd years and people can enjoy it. And so that's really a big thing. I know that the counties of both in Daggett and also UN are really excited about this. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and some of the other things that are, that are going on in the forest uh, in just a moment. And we'll be right back after this message from our sponsor, Strata Networks. Strata Networks is proud to bring the first true 4G LTE network to the Uinta Basin. 4G LTE is the most powerful mobile broadband available anywhere in the world. With speeds up to 10 times faster than 3G, you can stay connected like never before. Video chat without delay, stream HD TV or movies in an instant, and download or upload in seconds. For details, visit us in Roosevelt or Vernal or call 622-5007. More speed, more power. 4G LTE, only from Strata Networks. Welcome back to Local Point. Ryan Berkeley and John Erickson are both here to talk about the Ashley National Forest. We talked a little bit about uh, the, the 50th anniversary of the Wilderness Act in the, in the first section. Uh, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, safety, wilderness yeah. safety. So who would like to uh, take I can that cover one? that. Take I that one, the, Ryan. The, the biggest point I'd like to bring to put across is to plan your trip according to your comfort level and skill level and what goal you're planning to accomplish. And along with the other people in your group and utilize all the resources that are available to you to plan your trip. Um, either the, the Forest Service District offices ha or have a wealth of information about what areas would be suitable for the kind of experience you're looking for and what trails are cleared, um, what are some of the other trail conditions. And also um, just be ready for any condition, especially in the fall months. As we move in the fall, um, we can get snow up high at, at any moment. Uh, be, just be ready for anything, basically. And also think ahead. Yeah, think, think ahead, ahead and plan. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, you br make sure you bring a map and a compass. Don't you? Don't trust your cell phone to tell you where to where you, you're to where you need to go. Good advice. When you say map, I know in the past we've talked about uh, stopping by uh, the Forest Service office. Are maps available? Yes, maps are available. Um, either the National Geographic publishes a, a great map as well as the Forest Service of the High Uintas Wilderness. Right. And we also have the motor, motorized vehicle use maps for non-wilderness travel, um, which also brings other safety considerations. Such as? Well, uh, you know, the safety considerations that Ryan talks about for the wilderness, about thinking ahead and planning ahead, yes. uh, are just as relevant for areas that are motorized and we have motorized travel. Every, every mile you move away from Vernal, requires more uh, rel uh, thinking ahead about your own self-reliance. And so you need to be thinking about the weather just like you would in the wilderness, except that it becomes even more important when you're having vehicles and when that might get stranded. And what one of the if, th right? Yeah, what right. if this happened? Yeah. And one of the things that happens the more we get into the fall is that um, a lot of hunters will go up, they'll pull a trailer, and then a f snowstorm will come. And we get call after call, what do I do because I parked it in a place where I can't get out with the snow we have. We might have eight, ten inches of snow. And um, sometimes we'll get a thaw afterwards if they're patient, but that's always a kind of a scary thing for folks. So they really need to think about where they go, what kind of roads they go, 
And, um, and the other thing is that as those roads get wet or as they get icy, they're not the same as when they were using them in the summertime. So they need to think ahead about where they go. Um, they can cause both damage to themselves, their vehicle, but also road damage as ruts are developed mm -hmm. and whatnot. So really encourage folks to think ahead, bring blankets if they're not planning to stay overnight, bring blankets anyway because they might get stuck, to let people know where they're going. Let, you know, tell them I'm heading up Red Cloud Loop and then stay with your plan. So don't, don't head some other part of the forest right. where they don't know where to look for you if you don't come back that night. What a great message that you bring today. We've talked a lot with the Forest Service over the years, but I love this, uh, this reminder of safety and thinking ahead and planning for whatever may happen. Mm -hmm. Just thinking and planning, that's good, I like that. Um, now, now, you mentioned before the, uh, the rebuilding of uh, the Ute Tower, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so this is a, a, historic, uh, a historic piece. Yes. Right? I imagine that's why it's being rebuilt. Um, now tell me just a little bit more about something that's coming up uh, in, uh, in conjunction with that tower. Well, I know we're having a dedication day on September 20th, and we invited a lot of different people, county commissioners, even invited the governor to come. And um, we're having one of the people who stayed in the, in the uh, U Tower on her honeymoon. And, um, and, and, you know, it operated as a working uh, fire tower. And so they'll talk about what it's like <laughs> on your honeymoon to spend up in a U tower, and, yeah. uh, but also just what it's like to be there. And so I think um, this is a piece of uh, history of the area that people are excited about, right. that they've worked together from a variety of different public groups to make happen. And now we're so excited to see it finally come to completion and have a good, safe structure that people can enjoy and people can have a little piece of history with it. So we're excited There are a lot of it. memories that are attached to it, in other words, too. So yeah. uh, when is the, uh, the rededication ceremony? It's se um, September 20th at 10 o'clock. And at the tower at itself? At the tower. I'm sorry, at the tower. Yeah, it'll and be at so the And so if someone didn't know where it was but wanted to attend, could so they stop by the office yeah, again or a website? Yeah, stop by our office and we have maps. We can show them directions. It's fairly easy directions. It has um, some signs once you make the right kind of turns, but um, it's over on the Daggett County side or yes. the north side of the Uintas. But, but please stop by or have your viewers stop by in our offices and get directions. Well, it's always good to have you both here. I, I, I love to hear about what's going on in the forest. It's not like it's just there. They do things there, and there are things for, for, for people to enjoy. Uh, just in, our, in our, a couple of seconds, uh, uh, some things going on that, that might draw uh, some of our viewers uh, into the forest. Well, um, Ryan Works, I'll just say that share this as a user of the forest. Fall is a wonderful time to visit the forest. Great. You know, right now we're dealing with rains. But come, there'll come a time when our fall will dry out, and it's a it's a quiet time in the in the woods, and it's a time when you can enjoy cooler temperatures and sit outside and enjoy enjoy the foliage Changing and the see, colors and the, yeah, right. it's just a beautiful time. Yeah. And so we encourage people to recognize there's future camping opportunities there, and uh, exciting time to see. I love that. I love that. Have you got one more thing? I'd say, you know, just get out and see the fall colors. Come Either out and on see a, it. On an ATV, on hiking, driving the Red Cloud Loop. We probably just don't do enough of that, right? We stay indoors all the time, and we, we are surrounded by beauty. Yep. And you remind us of that when you come on to Local Point. Thank you both for coming today. Thank you. Thank and you. thank you for watching today's show. That's all for now. Please join us next time right here on VTV Channel 6. And remember to like us on Facebook for updates on your favorite VTV programming.